The secret world of Russian prison tattoos. Here, everyone is marked. And each drop of ink has a meaning. This is a thief. That's what the spider crawling cup on the right side means. These symbols are a language of their own. Six point stars. Only very high-ranked people can get this tattoo. Each body tells a unique story of time served and crimes committed. She started yelling, don't kill me, I'll give you everything. We just simply wanted to punish her. Throughout history, those shunned by society have sought unity, creating a language of allegiance and rank through the ink embedded in their skin. Moscow, Europe's largest city. Criminal activity here is rampant. Russia ranks second only to the US in the number of prisoners per capita. Historically, pretty much everyone knows someone who's been in prison or they've been in prison themselves. You've got to remember that in the 50s, 60s, you know, if you stole a cabbage or some corn, you know, you might get sent to prison for five or 10 years. Prisons are known here as the zone. Notoriously overcrowded, they're far more vicious and deadly than those in America. Here, death truly is around every corner. It was very hard to be in prison since all of the prisons and cells were packed, literally. People took turns to sleep in shifts, and there were more than a hundred people in the cell. These prisons are controlled by a notorious gang known as the Vorzaka, or Thieves in Law. Thieves in Law came about at the start of the Gulag system, and it was a way of thieves working together so that they kind of got the best out of that system for themselves. The Thieves in Law sit at the top of a complex hierarchy. They have a whole setup where they're at the top of the pyramid, and the rest of the pyramid kind of works around them. The bottom of the hierarchy is where the weakest prisoners, known as the downcasts, can be found. Once a prisoner is branded or lowered, then it's almost impossible for them to move out of that cast. They would even have uh, specific cutlery, specific chairs that they'd sit on. You know, they live a completely separate life from the other prisoners. The thieves in law maintain control through an intricate language of tattoos. Stars, epaulets, cathedrals, eyes, skulls. All communicate rankings silently. It's very important for a convict to have these tattoos on his body because they show his status within the prison system. The whole tattoo body is referred to as a top coat and tails. If you don't have any tattoos on your body, the criminal fraternity consider you worthless. The object of this system is to convey power. But before a prisoner can ink his body, he must prove himself. First of all, it's status. You have to present yourself so that others notice you. This is death. I kill with the left hand and I forgive with the right hand. Roman Vladimirovich wears the marks of the thieves-in-law. Marks he had to fight hard to get. Roman was in jail by the time he was 20. He never backed down from a fight, no matter the odds. Once I was alone and there were 13 of them. They beat the out of me, that's for sure. But I did send four of them into the intensive care. What else can I say about that? Nothing. His first crime, selling weapons illegally. I wanted to sell grenades, RDG-5. These are military grenades. And I also had a gun. And well, somebody, I'm not gonna say, they ratted on me. When he was sent to prison, Roman immediately attacked a prisoner who was marked with one of the most powerful thieves' tattoos. 
in prison, only the strongest survives. Once, I wounded this guy with a knife in his leg because he was trying to show off, so to speak. The gang said to me, come over here, we need to talk. And so I got up when he told me to get up. I consider myself a real tough guy. And this guy that I upset, he just slapped my face. And he had stars on his knees. These kind of stars. No tattoo is more important than the thief's star. Depending on the location on the body, the stars convey a prisoner's status. When worn on the knees, the stars are a sign of a prisoner who commands respect. Their meaning is, I will never get on my knees in front of anybody. Although they might make you a target for the authorities, they showed the other criminals that you weren't afraid of the authorities and showing that you know, you, you've got bravado and you're a person of strength. Stars on the chest mark an even higher rank. Only the most respected can wear the thieves' stars here. Can I show them? Roman earned his stars with just six months left on his sentence when a guard confronted him in his cell. He entered and he said, So, Roman, soon you will be released. And I said, Yes. And he said, How? With your dirty conscience. And he did not have time to finish his sentence. I simply hit him from the right or the left, I don't remember. Bottom line, I broke his jaw. He was taken out on a stretcher. I was put in solitary. I was beaten for 12 days and nights. Roman wears the scars with pride. I have nine stab wounds. Three here, 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 three here, two here, my left hand has been broken in many places. My right hand has been broken too, but not as bad. Roman paid severely for his confrontation with the prison guard. I was all black and blue. I could barely walk. These guys were almost carrying me. Taking on the guard earned him respect. He got what he deserved. And Roman got his stars. The penalty for wearing stars that are not approved by the thieves-in-law can be severe. <laughs> if it's my first time in prison, and I have thief stars, and I've never done time, and I have those stars, they'll just kill me. This sign is, you know, is the sign of the devil. The satanic number 666. Nikolai Denisov spent more than a decade in prison. His first sentence was for stealing food. When I went to jail for the first time, I went there because I stole government property. We stole two sacks of cabbage from a collective farm field. For that, I was given a year. Petty thievery was just the beginning for Nikolai. His body tells the story of a much darker criminal past. I made these marks on myself. Yes. An unthinkable murder. We dragged her into the kitchen. She started yelling, don't kill me, don't kill me. I'll give you everything. Nikolai is now ready to tell his story for the first time. At that moment, when we broke into the apartment, this devilish anger awakened inside of me. I just simply saw a dead body. Marked is decoding Russian criminal tattoos. Complex images of rank, religion, and rebellion. The practice began in the 19th century. In 1846, they branded criminals with the word cat which is short for katoznik, which means hard labor criminal. That branding across the face told everyone what that person had been. And since that date, the word cat has come to mean like a scoundrel, someone who has no morals, for whom nothing is sacred. Over time, convicts embraced these images. The original brandings were viewed as a kind of caste marking by the criminals 
So in, in a kind of perverse sense, they, they became proud of those markings. In the 1900s, prisoners began to mark themselves. Portraits of Soviet leaders Stalin and Lenin were among the most common early tattoos. Criminals believed that if they tattooed images of Stalin and Lenin on their chest, this would protect them from the firing squad because the authorities wouldn't uh, shoot at any images of their leaders. This really wasn't the case because generally they just got shot in the back of the head. With the rise of the notorious prison gang known as the Thieves-in-Law, tattoos became more important and more complex. These criminals really are illustrated men, and the images tell the complete life story of their criminal activities on their body. Russian prison guard Danzig Baldeyev secretly recorded and decoded prison tattoos for more than three decades. At one stage, the KGB found out about him, but they supported his work because they realized the value of knowing what a criminal had done by being able to read the tattoos on his body. The guards' images were collected into a three-volume encyclopedia that serves as the most valuable tool for deciphering criminal tattoos. It's an incredible job of allowing us an insight into being able to read those images. At the Church of St. Nicholas outside Moscow, Father Alexander watches over former convicts. People who are released into the world, no one wants to deal with them for who they are. This problem, of course, exists everywhere in the world. The criminals who live here illustrate the history of the Russian penal system. Here Nikolai. Sergei. Here is Nikolai and Sergei. They've been here for about half a year. Sergei committed four murders. He was in prison for a very long time, 30 years. Like many former prisoners, he is reluctant to show his tattoos. I'm not going to take my clothes off. I'll only show you what's on my shoulders and my back. OK, I'm speechless. Don't get any more. You understand me, right? What else do you have then? A demon. A demon? This is horrible. It's scary to look at. That's why all your deeds in the past were devilish. Are you repenting? I do, Father. Thank God. Kiss the cross. While Sergei has just a few tattoos, his roommate is a walking catalog of criminal ink. Nikolai Bogatyev is a career criminal. At 52, his body tells the story of his life outside the law. It's very important for a convict to have these tattoos on his body because they show his status within the prison system. Death to cops. That's from a bullet injury. And here I have, if you don't do right, they won't do you wrong. Nikolai's ink speaks volumes. Epaulets are used to signal rank within the thieves-in-law. Captains, lieutenants, and colonels. The epaulet, that indicates that I'm a bandit. Everyone tattoos according to his place in the prison society. That's thief paired at the Soviet Union. Snarling tigers, leopards, or wolves, known as oskals, the Russian word for big grin. These images express hostility toward the authorities. Nikolai's disdain for authority is clearly inscribed across his chest. I'm a slave to fate, but no lucky to the law. And on his back. I cannot step to either side. The law has taken aim at the back of my head. Bodies are often adorned with personal inscriptions. I live in sin. I'll repent when I die. Hurry up and live. Keep love. That's hurry up and live. The most telling is the ink on Nikolai's shoulder. Well, this is a thief. 
That's what a spider crawling up on the right side means. When the spider is climbing down, that means I'm done with a criminal life. When it's climbing up, it means I'm not done robbing. It's going up. But I'm already an old man. It ought to be turned around. Nikolai is living a clean life, but the tattoo on his back records his past offenses. Each dime on the cathedral is a term that he spent in prison. On Nikolai's back, six church domes for the six sentences he served. The cathedral, or Kremlin, is one of the most iconic inked images. The most interesting ones are the ones that are on the legs or the hand. And then if that hand has a manacle on it, it means the terms were over five years. Those to me are a weird combination of images. The cathedral tattoos. Religious iconography hiding the sinister nature of hardened criminals behind breathtaking works of art. These people never worked with professional tattoo machines. They always worked with homemade ones. I think that's an incredible skill. Karin Vartanov is a former drug addict. While doing time for robbery, he immersed himself in the rebellious images of the thieves. The design was more sophisticated and beautiful because there were prison tattoo artists there, and those guys were making some amazing drawings. His criminal career started early. The first time I was detained, I was six years old. I had a slingshot in my hands, and I shot at the cops. I was aiming at the cops' asses, so they caught me and took me to the precinct. His fascination with ink began soon after. I made my first tattoo when I was 14 at school, during my classes. It was done with an ordinary sewing needle, which I borrowed from my mom along with some thread and ink. You take a needle, wind the thread around the tip, soak it in the ink, and prick the skin. My first tattoos were very simple. A letter A, which stands for anarchy. Here are the tattoos I made when I was in school. Here is the anarchy tattoo. Well, you don't have much sense when you're 14. Karen's addiction eventually led to a savage beating from the Russian police. There was a car standing here, and I broke its window and took the radio out of it. When I was taking it out, I saw out of the corner of my eye flashing lights. I was afraid and thought, this is it, you've done it now. There was a girl with me, my accomplice. We ran up to the entrance, and we were caught by the agents. And here we were put face down on the ground. We were beaten. Here you can't get by without being beaten. If they catch you, then they punch you in the face. The beating only fueled Karen's anger. For stealing the radio, Karen spent more than two years in prison. His back displays his disdain for the law. This is the bulldog showing his teeth. Grudge. A grudge against the government, against life, against all this low life. While inside, he refined his skills as an artist, defying the rules of the guards. I was caught once making a tattoo at night. They beat me with batons. A lot of scary stuff can happen. On the one hand, it's all funny, but on the other hand, it makes me want to cry. Russian prison tattoos, rich in history, charged with symbolism. Now marked reveals how this spectacular ink is created using only the crudest instruments. It was in prison that I first took the tattoo machine in my hands. Karin was high when he inked this tattoo. I tattooed this when I was in the prison hospital. I got sick with pneumonia. 
When I was getting better, I got high on some pills and made this tattoo in one hour. I tattooed it here, right up to the eagle's head. This type of ink is known as bardak, meaning chaos. It represents an evolution in the coded messages of prison tattoos. There are two distinct forms of tattooing. One is the traditional way, where the criminal follows a standard pattern. And then the new way, which dates from the 60s or 70s, where it's a much more random approach, where tattoos are placed all over the body. Karen's bardak reflects his Armenian heritage. Here it says in Armenian, God is with us. And his hostility. Here I have Japanese and Irish swastikas. Spades trumps. Spades also stands for spear or lance, meaning that Caucasians are tough. I'm Caucasian, so I'm tough, aggressive. So I tattooed the spades and I wrote, spades trump. Karen crafted these tattoos in prison using homemade ink and tattoo guns. Using an ordinary tire tube, he demonstrates how the ink was made. You have to cut it up. You take the bowl. Usually, it's the bowl that convicts eat from, and you can burn very fast. Usually, it's done during the walk in the prison yard while cops don't see it. It has to burn through completely. Every piece has to be burned through. It must be powder light. It'll burn completely now. There should not be a single piece left there. In jail, boot heels are the best source of rubber. The heel is more frequently used because you get a more saturated ink. That is the best ink. It settles, stays on the skin. You cannot remove it. It's almost burned through already. It'll turn out to be a lot of ink here. A lot. The soot is then mixed with a liquid. In prison, this is commonly done with urine. What is the urine used for? For antiseptic purposes, that is, so no infection would get into the person's blood. The urine must be from the person who is being tattooed, otherwise he will be labeled a homosexual. I cannot use my urine, otherwise he'll be a f Let's go, I'll show you what else has to be done. An old bed sheet is used as a strainer. The mixture is then poured through the sheet to sift out any impurities. And the homemade ink is collected. Then Karen builds a tattoo gun using items easily acquired in prison. Nobody is going to give you the tattoo machine for you to use. You have to try and assemble your own tattoo machine. You take an ordinary toothbrush. You take a silk thread, hold it steady. You have to cut the head of the brush with the thread. The rest of the toothbrush is then molded into a handle. That's called prison welding. You take a motor from a Walkman or from a boombox and attach it. This is the tip. That is, you take a cap from a pen. You saw through a hole here, and you burn a hole for the needle. You insert a lighter valve here, the valve from an ordinary lighter. Sharpening the needle is next. A claw or a needle. You make from a guitar string. You sand it. Fold an angle, so there is a right angle. You take the tip from the pen, the part you write with. Take out the ball, and you use the lighter to fuse it, and then you carefully fold it. Then you insert it in here. 
Here it is. Corinne inserts the makeshift needle. He is not afraid to test the homemade rig on his own skin, re-inking his fading work. First I used it on myself. I tried and I tried and it worked out. If I'm doing a lousy job, what are they gonna do? I could only get beaten for that. You did a lousy job. You get what you deserve. I got this tattoo when I was underage. This means I'm not submissive to the administration. The images on Vyacheslav Yermanek's body are deeply coded with one message. I will not back down from anyone. You can immediately tell that the person with this tattoo was in jail at some point. He served time in Russia's most notorious jail, the White Swan. It's just simply horrifying to talk about, even to remember. The White Swan, Russia's most notorious prison. For the first time, Mark goes inside to see a gang of professional thieves who rule using a complex language of tattoos. Everything inmates here need to know is ink on their bodies. Tattoos on the body are very important because when you're in prison, they show your ranking within the prison system. Basically, you're naked in prison. So, you know, you can still show that you are a person of importance by these tattoos that you carry. Each body part is reserved for different images. Always visible, ink on the fingers conveys important messages. The ring tattoos are very important because they showed the status of a criminal even when he was fully clothed. And well, first I got one ring. It sort of means half of your life in prison and half of your life out of prison. And this one means I pass through juvie. Nikolai Denisov was recently released. He served 13 years for a horrified murder. He is covered with symbols reflecting his dark crime. Most of his tattoos are old and faded, but they still brand him as a criminal. Usually, anywhere you go, people pay attention to your hands. Aha, uh -huh. since you have tattoos, that means you're a convict. Any ring tattoo seen by the general public, they would know that that person is a criminal. The vast majority of the population of, of Russia have been through prisons or gulags at certain stages, so a lot of people know that history within Russia. On his ring finger, an intimidating symbol, shunning the law. This one means you honor thieves and not cops. Tattoos that display hatred against authorities are common even in the women's prisons. The sign of a married life, that's when from a young age, you are constantly dealing with the cops. This woman is asked to have her identity concealed. We will call her Nadia. She's just been released after 10 years behind bars. 